Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markwe at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. This is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Malkwe of Living Streams International, bringing you matters of faith with Graphic Online. Living Streams International, we meet behind the trade fair, behind Zenith College. You can miss us on Sundays and on Wednesdays for midweek services in the evening, but Sundays in the morning. Now, this morning, I am um, I'm a little bit a little bit garrulous. I mean, I, I just want to have fun. So I like to call what I'd say, do me, I do you considerations. You know, life is, is, is full of situations or uh, quid pro quo situations where, I mean, or divine, uh, of exchanges, you, you, you understand? You go to the market, you, you, the supermarket, you see something very nice, you pick it up, you pay for it. And um, we, we have all those kind of situations every time around us. We have a, a lot of those situations around you. And um, it's... You, there's something you, you place an offer and there's something that you're also giving back uh, in return. And um, life is just like that. Now, in First Samuel chapter 1, you know, First Samuel chapter 1, like I said, is the story of Anna who was barren and pending her rival who, was, uh, who had abundance of kids. Now, um, well, who had the blessing of kids, rather, not abundance, because I don't know how many kids she had, but she had the blessing of kids. And you realize, you read the story how Anna was having a real traumatic experience at the lips of this woman. I mean, Penina made her life really, really miserable. You know, sometimes what you don't have screams at the presence of what others have. You know, uh, what you don't have will scream loudly and to announce itself so loudly in the presence of those who have. And if you're not very careful, you'll be running away and trying to avoid situations where you'll be reminded of what you don't have. Now, if you remember, when Anna walked into the temple and the Bible says she prayed and prayed, and I've already covered it, uh, she poured out the bitterness of her soul. There was one a line, a, a line or two verses that really blew me out. That is in 1 Samuel chapter 1, 27 and 28. The Bible said, look at what she said. She said, God, if you give me a son, I will give him back to you for the rest of his life. Now, Anna said, Lord, I need a son desperately. But if you give me a son, I will give my son to you. Now, um, I was pretty, pretty much, I mean, that's a barren woman. And all of a sudden, she has a child. And then when she has a child, she said, I'm going to give him back to you. So in that tough fight, then she's going to left with nothing. I mean... But a deeper understanding of it blew my mind. Here is the principle. When Anna said, Lord, if you give me a child, I'll give it to you. I'm giving you back my child as a priest. Well, in those days, Eli and his sons were in apostasy. And Eli's sons were just misbehaving. I mean, they were just rascals. Rascals. So can I tell you something? It is not today that rascals were running in the temple. Eli's children were just rascals. You get it. I mean, they'll go for the offering. They'll go. It's not today that people started. I mean, it's not a long time ago. Really, really, really real rascals. So now, and so there was going to be a problem. At the death of Eli, nobody was appearing for the priesthood. Nobody was standing out for the priesthood. But Anna said, Lord, I recognize your need. I recognize your challenge. And because I recognize your challenge, you know what? You give me a son. Meet my challenge and I'll meet your challenge. Give me a son, I'll give you a priest. Give me a son, I'll give you a seer. Give me, give, give me, give me something. Give me something that is going to that is going to feed my maternal instincts. And I'm also going to give you somebody who's going to uh, feed your priestly um, needs. So Anna. Didn't Anna just didn't go there and said, give me, give me, give me, give me. She found a divine purpose for her need. She placed a divine purpose on what she needed. 
And that's why I'm saying, you do me, God, and I will do you too. So here's the thing. We must learn sometimes, sometimes place a divine purpose on your need. Place a divine purpose on your need. I'm not saying that go and look around and fabricate this thing. Find out something that God needs. What you, you're praying for material wealth, you're praying for prosperity. Place a divine purpose on it. Place a kingdom purpose on it. That's what Anna did. God, give me a son and I will give you a priest. And as a result of Anna getting a son and she giving it back to God, guess what? She had five more. So she had three sons and two daughters. So the one who had nothing had abundance because she recognized the law of divine exchange. And I know this is going to raise a lot of eyebrows because we are in periods where people are thinking that people are being manipulated into giving. No, 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 no. Look, a thousand, uh, a, a thousand cows on a hill belongs to God. What else did he? If you read Psalm 50, he owns everything. You get it? So in reality, I mean, God has no need. But guess what? He really has need. He has need of men. He has need of people who would, who would uh, invest their time, their talent, and their treasures. Their time, their talent, and their treasures. So you know what? Fix a divine purpose to your need. Find a divine purpose and put a divine purpose on it. Tell God, do me. And when you do me, I will do you. See you later.